guess how the week's gone. Um, yeah, so far in terms of preparation for Portugal. Yeah, no. Uh, you know, obviously a tough old week. Um, so we trained the day after the game um, because we wanted to get back out on the field um, with a young players who thought want to get their th thoughts in their head about how we want to play against Portugal. So we changed the training week around. Trained on the Monday, had Tuesday as a recovery day. Then had two really good sessions Wednesday, Thursday. Um, yeah, we've got a clear plan of how we'd like to play against Portugal and the players have responded really well. You know, as I've said previously, they're a really good bunch of, of young players and, and their application to to want to be better has been fantastic. And you said combination, can you um, talk us through your thinking there? Uh, yeah, just opportunity for, for you know, for Keddie's train well the whole tournament. Uh, Samu's probably just been a little bit off, you know. He's had a tough run into the World Cup, you know, coming back from ACL, two hamstring injuries. Uh, just hasn't been as sharp as we'd like him to be. And Jordi Pattaya had a bit of a calf calf issue. He's fit now, but uh, again with, with Izzy, he's trained really well the whole World Cup and feel like, you know, both of those two guys can do a really good job for us against against uh, right, against uh, Portugal. Hi there, Eddie. Um, I just wonder, uh, if people back at home are sort of, obviously they've uh, not been enjoying the jobs as you have. I just wonder what you'd say to them to sort of reassure them to, to keep the faith. Uh, look, all we can do is try to get better every day, mate. That's the only thing we can do. You know, we've got a young squad here. I purposely picked a young squad. Um, and I think they're the best players in Australia. And, and we're, all we can do is try to get better every day. There's no lack of desire, no lack of work ethic, no lack of spirit within the team. They're a great bunch of boys. And, you know, we're just not good enough at the moment. But if we keep working the way we will, we will be. Uh, no, well, I've, I've already mentioned the in intervention of the TMO previously. Yeah, I think it's really affecting the flow of the game. And uh, it's making rugby much more stop-start, which makes it a much more powerful game. And I don't know whether we want to keep going down that track and making it more powerful. Uh, where does this rate rank? Oh, well, it's not really about me, mate. It's about the team, you know. My, my only job is to get the team prepared as well as I can, so the only thing I've been thinking about is the team. Just in terms of the clarity over your Are you able to give us any update around that, how you're feeling? I understand Phil War was here yesterday as well. Yeah, well, the only thing I'm concentrating on is the Portugal game, mate. So if you want to ask about anything else, don't ask. I think the Australian public deserves a yes or no answer, Eddie, to the question of did you interview with Japan? On so the I've, just said, I've just said to you, mate, and I've already answered that before. You haven't given a yes or no answer? I've already said that before. How hard is it to give a yes or no answer? I said no, mate. Yeah. I said no previously. When people like Simon Boyer and say that if that's true, your position's untenable, how does that make you feel? I'm just worried about the Portuguese game. Have you considered resigning after this weekend? I'm only worried about the Portuguese game. <laughs> Um, Eddie, after the game the other night, you said that there isn't just issues with the, the Wallabies, but there are deeper issues within Australian rugby. Could you expand on what they are and what needs to be done to, you know, from ground up to, to sort it out? Yeah, well, yeah, there are. Um, but again, my focus is on the Portuguese game. And I think those sort of issues should be dealt with by the by Rugby Australia. We're, we're obviously talking about it all the time. And, you know, when I first came in the job, we were talking about it and we're still talking about it now. Um, 
but it's not for me to talk about those issues, and I don't, I don't want anyone to think that we're making excuses for performance of the team. You know, as I said, I take full responsibility for the performance of the team, and I stand by that. Do you think you got your selection right for this World Cup squad? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Why do, you, why do you feel that way? Because I, I feel this is the best group of players to represent Australia at this World Cup. And the results haven't been great, guys. I understand that, but they're a good young bunch of players and I think we've got the best players in each position here. And, and did it absolutely have to be at a World Cup campaign where you through this challenge? Did it absolutely have to be at this World Cup where you ushered through that, that generational challenge? Well, it was the only opportunity I had, mate. Yesterday when uh, Pierre was uh, in, he was talking about what he thought was the inability of the Wallabies players to cope with pressure moments. Um, just wondered whether or not you think that's been a problem, uh, whether they failed to deal with pressure. And the other thing he said was um, he doesn't reckon Super Rugby is um, preparing people for these pressure moments as much as, say, uh, European footy does. Do you have any thoughts on whether... Um, is the right sort of place Again, they're, they're all key issues and, and certainly there's some truth in those things that Pierre said, but again, I'm only focusing on the Portuguese game. Yeah, you know, I can't change Super Rugby, I can't change the amount of high-pressure games our players play in. So again, we defer to other, other issues that are, are definitely there. But the only thing we can control is what we do here. And again, I, you know, as I said, I take full responsibility for our performances. So I don't want to defer to other issues. You know, that would be, I think, uh, not the right way to go. Um, just one on the back row, so you flip back to the way the back row was against Fiji. Just, I think you said last week that you wanted some more size. What's the thinking with... Um, going back to the original 76 combo? Uh, well, this against Portuguese, Portugal, it's going to be a work rate game. You know, they, they play a side-to-side -side game and feel that having two workers there will suit us best and then and then uh, Leota can come on in the second half. And yeah, I thought he played well last week for us. Um, and it's also a bit of, of keeping the players fresh. You know, we've got, a, again, a young team that needs to be kept fresh. Uh, well, it's just another opportunity to watch them live and, you know, what, what you're trying to do when you go and watch them live is just to pick out the intent of how they're trying to play. Uh, it's not so much the shapes, but the intent of how they're trying to play, how they're trying to uh, get into the game themselves. Um, so that was pretty useful, mate. Um, Eddie, lots of people have talked about how lots of the players, how training was really great last week before, before the game and, and the week before, really. And you said you changed the sort of structure, but have you changed anything else this week to sort of get a different result for the week? Oh, uh, well, changing, looking at changing everything, mate. Uh, trying to find out what's, what works and does, doesn't work. Um, but. When I say that, we're, we're consistent in our training. You know, we're, I think we've, we've trained really well, but we're not getting the results. And sometimes the scoreboard's the last thing to change. You know, and that's hard to take. And, and I know it's hard to understand, but sometimes that's just the case. Um, and you know when you say you take full responsibility, um, what, what does that mean in practice? Well, if people have got a problem with the results, they come to me. Right, and at the end of the tournament, I'll stand and stand by that. And if if there needs to be a four guy for the for the World Cup, then then it's obviously me. Like that's when you become a head coach of a team, you take on that responsibility. So I've got, you know, the playing group. I think it's been absolutely fantastic. I couldn't ask any more for them. Couldn't ask any more for them. So therefore, if there needs to be someone responsible for the performance, it's me. I think that's pretty. Self-explanatory in a way. There's one just behind you, Luke. Thanks, Mark. Uh, and you've seen a lot of other 
big teams and they've made the so-called grouping out have made a lot more changes than, than you've made. And by picking the essentially the strongest team, is this to try and build confidence? Or what's your thinking behind picking such a strong side? Uh, well, I didn't hear the first part of the question. But a, lot, a lot of other teams have changed like, like the whole team when they've been playing against the group minutes, like Wales did against Portugal. You've gone more or less with the strongest side. What was the thinking behind that? Uh, well, w I've always gone into every World Cup and you pick the best 23 for each game, and this is the best 23. Eddie, can you promise Australian rugby fans that you will see these tough times out and that you will be with the team moving forward and you want to help the Australian rugby team prosper? Well, I've, I think I've said that before, mate. I know you're going down that track, mate. I'm concentrating on the Portugal game. I'm 100% committed to the job and I've said that previously. And I know you want to keep asking and you can keep asking. I appreciate your interest. Eddie, you did also highlight for the World Cup that you were planning for 27. I know you focus on Portugal, but how much desire do you have to be there for 27, hopefully with a rebuilt, stronger Wallaby side and a home World Cup? Well, you know, that's definitely an option. But again, the only thing I'm worried about now is the Portuguese game. For me to make statements about the future is, is irrelevant. Uh, well, you're always looking to see what you're doing, mate, um, whether you're doing it the right way or not. Um, so continually doing that. In terms of potential psychological scarring for young players, are obviously devastating on the weekend. What damage? Um, is that a concern or have you done time to address that? Uh, well, for, from my perspective, for the young players, it's a great learning opportunity, fantastic learning opportunity. And every, every team I've seen develop has a, has a game like that, that that is etched in their memory but actually acts as a spur to work a little bit harder and to understand what it takes to win at this level. Uh, Dave, you've been sitting there patiently, you've been sitting there patiently for a couple of weeks as your coach has been bombarded with questions. How are you feeling? You know, most times when you're a national captain, it should be a moment of celebration. How have you felt throughout these past couple of weeks? Uh, specifically, just in regards to like, your coaches coming under a bit of a department as a as the leader, as a coach, and if you're sitting there alongside you watching it all the time. Well, it's only natural when we haven't gotten results, isn't it? So, um, as Eddie's touched on, for us as a group, it was a tough couple of tough. 24 hours after the game, and now we focus on what we can control, which is our performance against Portugal, which is. Um, finishing in the jersey the way we should be um, and doing our country proud with a win. That's all we can control and that's all we're focusing on. And has it been particularly tough or can you bring us inside the camp about how the, the playing group is feeling during this point in time? Uh, as I said, sort of the first 24 hours was tough and um, yeah, I'm proud of the group and how we've responded this week in terms of our training week. Um, and again, we're focusing on what we can do this weekend, which is putting out a performance that we're proud of as a group and finishing on a high. Uh, and I remember that you used to say that your mum used to call you or whatever after matches. And, um, like, in terms of a personal toll, do you take a moment and think, why, am I, why do I do this to myself? Like, why am I putting myself in this position? You've obviously been a coach for so long. Like, you, you probably don't need the money. Like. What's your motivation, I suppose? Oh, I love coaching. And I love, I love the challenge. And that's the reason I came back to Australia, because I wanted to make a difference. And I apologise, I haven't made a difference. But I want to make a difference. You know, I, I was disappointed in how the Wallabies were going, and I wanted to, to come back and make a, make a change. And, and, you know, I think I've started that process. Uh, where it goes, I don't know, because I'm not in control of that. But I've started that process. And I think we've got a great bunch of young players here who are ready to take it on. And that'll start on Sunday. Is your mum still alive? Ah, uh, she's still alive. She doesn't text me anymore. I think she's, she says, just win. Everything fixes winning. And it does. Everything, winning fixes everything. So 
we're just focused on winning this weekend. Uh, David, it's been a tough start, obviously, but how have you found captaincy um, on field in games particularly? Like, how does that change your role and what you're doing? Is there an extra load and how does that extra load kind of sit on you? Oh, it helps when you've got experience around you. You know, I've got um, quality leadership group on the field as well. You know, on the field I had Slips next to me, um, Whitey off the pine, Tate, um, Simon in the back, so that always helps. Um, that eases the load for me. It's just about going out of there and performing. Um, that, that's all I can control as well. Just um, specifically, I guess, and it's, a, it's just a moment. It's not. It didn't change game completely, but the decision to take a line out rather than a kick for goal. Can you maybe talk through how, when you're in the field in that moment, that gets decided? Like, is that your decision? Is it kind of? A committee comes together and then you make a decision or how did that kind of go down? Yeah, ultimately, ultimately it's my decision. Um, we came together as a group and we felt like um, at that point in time that's what we wanted to go for. Um, didn't pan out but yeah, we, we came together and we followed the process of what we've been doing all throughout these months together. Yes. Sorry for my awful accent. Uh, I would like to know you are acting, uh, acting like the uh, lightning rod, uh, like uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yes, yep. lightning lightning rod. Sorry, uh, but do you think it um, it's a great thing to responsabilize your players or not to or not to protect much of them to to protect them? Yeah. Just like uh, uh, children who grow adults. But if you keep um, protect them too much, maybe they don't, they don't uh, go stronger. Yeah, no, it's a really good question. But at this stage, particularly with a, you know, we've got a, we've got a, you take James Slipper out of our squad and we've got an average test cap at 20, 20. You know, it's a very young team. So I want to protect them at this stage. You know, if you, your child's, three or four you want to protect them when they get to eight and nine, ten or twelve there's a different way of parenting um, and I feel this is the best way at the moment. Good question. Um, Dave, what's, what's been your message specifically this week to the young players starting? How have you looked to support them? Um, again, mate, I don't mean to echo this point but control what we can control, which is our performance this weekend. Um, you know, we, we, we've done what we need to do over the first day in reviewing the game, because that's important. You can't just sweep that under the rug. Um, and we've done that. We've come out the other side. We've had a good training week again, and now we just focus on what we can control, which is our performance. That's the best thing we can do as a young group. Turn around with action and go out there and put a performance that we're proud of. Dave, uh, Dave, how closely will you be watching <coughs> Fiji, Georgia tomorrow? Is, it, is there a plan as a group to get together and, and watch that game, or is it just personal choice? I think everyone's pretty um, been pretty into this World Cup in terms of watching the games. You know, the games are always shown in our team room, so um, yeah, I think we'll get together as a squad and we'll watch it. Eddie, there's been a couple of reports of, uh, linking Angus Crichton uh, with a move to rugby back at home at, at the moment. Um, just wanted to know your level of involvement with that and, and what he might offer Australian rugby. Is he available for Portugal? He's not, but don't the Australian people deserve so, a bit of a plan for the future? Uh, I'm obviously here and I've obviously been in other places that people are suggesting I've been. I wasn't involved in Angus Crichton at all. And, and I really... I, I've got enough to worry about here, as you can see. There's one just in front of you, sorry. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, coach, uh, everybody here uh, loves the Wallabies, but unfortunately you are playing against Portugal, and here there is a lot of people from Portugal. Um, so the stadium maybe will be for Portugal. And do you think the pressure will, will be uh, strong against your team and uh, how the player will, will react to this? Yeah, well, this is the great thing about the World Cup, and particularly when you play in the Northern Hemisphere, 
you know, when you come from the Southern Hemisphere, you know the crowds are going to be quite intense and it's a di different atmosphere. And this is all a process of, 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 of bringing a team up. Um, yeah, and this is a wonderful opportunity on Sunday to be exposed again. Small stadium, 45,000 people, probably a high percentage of Portuguese fans. And we've got to be able to cope with that pressure. And we've got to be able to learn to cope with that pressure. And another opportunity to learn on Sunday. Anything further, Freddie or Dave? Uh, Dave, just on that point of pressure and what Pierre was saying yesterday as well, do you feel like there's been a failure to deal with pressure at big moments and um, do you think that that is in some way tied to the club football you play and the lack of games and the opposition? The lack of games? Yeah, uh, that, that you're playing compared to European players and the, and the <coughs> quality of opposition you're playing Oh, mate, the body hasn't felt like we've had a lack of games this season. Um, we get put under just as much pressure in Super Rugby. Um, is there a failure to deal with it? It's hard to say. I think in, in, in sport, in rugby games, there's moments that you, you can win and you can lose. And obviously in big moments, there are a couple that we haven't sort of fronted up and been able to deal with. Does that mean we've got an issue with being able to deal with it, I wouldn't say so. Um, you know, we get put under pressure in training and we work our way through it and we find solutions. Um, yeah, mate, I, I don't really have an answer. I don't think we do, so. Any further? Sorry, that one. Thank you. Just, just a quick one there. I, I want to play maybe you if you talked about it already, but why did you change your two centre? Uh, well, both have trained really well during the World Cup. Um, Sammy's just been a little bit off his best. Um, uh, Jordan had a, a slight calf injury, which is OK now, but couldn't train. So we just decided to give those two guys the opportunity and think they'll play well against uh, a Portuguese team. Thank you.